Hello, everybody. This is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty, and I am back with, yes, four more Christmas decor pieces for you today. I am always super excited to show you guys what I've been working on. And these are more pieces that are going to go on my Christmas tree. Of course, you can use them however you'd like, but I've been working really hard at getting quite a few things uh, crafted for my tree this year. So let's get into this video. I will be showing you um, a couple different ways to make one particular DIY, and then there's going to be two other ones on here. So you're going to need some of these little beads from, I get my beads everywhere, but those particular ones came from Walmart. I've got some uh, craft sticks from Dollar Tree. I've got some cubes and tumbling tower blocks, Dollar Tree as well. This ribbon, I keep saying this um, garland or trim came from Dollar Tree. I hope it did. I'm not sure. I've got some scrap craft paper from Hobby Lobby, and I think a little bit may have come from Joann's. I've got some twine from Walmart, the thicker twine. And then I've got Waverly's Antique Wax, Apple Barrel Chocolate Bar, and Americana Santa Red, and my own homemade white chalk paint. I've got a long wooden dowel, and that most likely came from Walmart. And again, you guys, I am using the Dollar Tree MDF to get the um, decor pieces that I want. Dollar Tree has not come out with a rocking horse, and I want one. So let's make one. I freehanded a horse. Um, on some paper and then I just traced it onto the MDF. Actually, right now, it kind of looks like a Great Dane, pretty much like what Marmaduke and Scooby-Doo, <laughs> they were Great Danes. It kind of looks like that right now, but I promise you, it's going to be a rocking horse. I mixed up some brown paint and some white paint. It looked like chocolate milk. I didn't like it. So I went back and I grabbed my Apple Barrel Chestnut and I gave the horse a coat of paint with the chestnut. And then I cut out these two rocker panels and I just really freehanded like a canoe shape or maybe like a banana um, and cut those out. And now I painted them in the Santa Red by Americana. You see me here taking my dowel and I'm just doing a starter hole at the end of each one of these rocker panels. And I painted everything front and back because, again, it's going to be on my tree. So even when you see the back, I want it to look finished. After I did my starter hole, I went in with a screwdriver and I made that hole bigger because we're going to need to be able to fit that wooden dowel through those holes. Now I'm going to take my wooden dowel. I'm going to measure out a five inch piece and you're going to need two of those. Then I'm going to stain it with my furniture marker from Dollar Tree. I believe I will be using the one in cherry. You guys, I slowed this video down a little bit. My videos usually go super fast. Um, and I slowed this one down a little bit because there's a lot of detail and parts to it. And I wanted to be able to explain it all and walk you guys through it. If you decide you want to make one of these absolutely adorable rocking horses and guess what this one is my favorite of the four that i'm going to show you today it was hard to choose oh my gosh but this one is so pretty i love it i i really felt like you know i was a little elf in santa's workshop making toys i kid you not i enjoyed this so much so i took a very small piece of that dowel and I cut it and I sanded it because that's going to be the handle um, on the rocking horse. So now we're just going to feed those through the holes that we made. Trying to get them even. Doesn't matter if they're absolutely even or you know you guys just do the best you can we're going to put wood beads on the ends of these dowels and you won't be able to tell if they're exactly even or not i did go around this 
decor piece and sanded it. You guys know I love things that look rustic, farmhouse, antique, and the sanding of this made it look antique and rustic and farmhouse, which is absolutely my vibe, you guys. If you've been with me for a while, you know that. I love that. So this came out just beautiful. I'm placing my craft sticks to see how many I want to use. And that was too many, so I removed some of them because it covered up the rocker more than I wanted it to. I wanted to see a little bit of that. So I took some of those off. And I'm just placing the horse on the dowels just to see how it looks and where I want everything to sit. So now I'm just going to notch out some little pieces off of each hoof because I want the horse to be able to sit on top of that dowel. I want the hoof to fit around the dowel, if that makes any sense. You'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. And we're going to hot glue that down. Now that's not going to be enough to secure it. So you'll see what I'm going to do in just a little bit to add some stability to the horse. So here you see me just getting my craft sticks um, measured out and I'll take this one and cut it and I'll use it to measure out all of the others. Thank you so much to all of my new subscribers. My channel is growing and I, I couldn't be more, more pleased about that. Thank you. If you're new here, you are so welcome to be here. Talk to me in the comments. I love hearing from you, your thoughts, what you think about the DIYs. And you know, if you've been with me for a while, I love you so much. Thank you for coming back. You guys, don't forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up. That helps my channel so much. YouTube notices that and they push me out a little bit more so others can see me as well. So here you see me just getting my craft sticks glued down, just cleaning up a little bit. Once I get them all glued down, I'm going to go in with my Dollar Tree furniture marker and just give them a little bit of a stained look using that cherry, the same one I used on the dowels. And I'm going to take my beads and I'm just going to add them to the ends. I just want to make sure they all fit because some of them I had to make the hole a little bit larger. So I'm just looking to make sure that they fit. And then I'm going to add a dab of hot glue in the center of each bead and put it back on the end of the dowel. It just adds a finished look to it. And now I'm just placing the horse back on making sure I have it centered on those dowels. And I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to each hoof and glue it down. And now I'm going to take two more of those beads and I'm going to carefully cut them in half, keeping my fingers out of the way. And we're going to take those half beads and glue one to each side of the hoof. That's going to give this more stability and keep that horse in place. And here you see I sanded everything down like I told you I love to do. So I'm taking some of this thicker jute cord from the from Walmart. I was going to say from Dollar Tree, but it's from Walmart. And I'm just measuring out three pieces so I can make the mane for the horse. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tuft at the top. I'm going to leave a little bit of it sticking out. 
and I'm going to take some thin jute cord from Dollar Tree and I'm going to get this tied off. Then I'm going to go ahead and braid it down and add a little bit of hot glue to the end to hold it together. And now that that's done, I'm going to go back and unravel that little bit that I left at the top. This is the part that's going to sit on top of the horse's head and around the ear of the horse. So you want to unravel it and make it nice and fluffy so it looks like a mane or hair or whatever you want to call it. You just want it to be nice and fluffy and we'll give them a little trim if we need to. So I'm going to add some hot glue, just a little dab, and get that glued down. And then I'm going to take about five more pieces. I'm just going to measure out how long I want that mane to be. And I'm going to go longer than I need because we can trim it up if it's too long, but I don't want it to be short. So I'm going to cut five of those pieces of jute, and I'm going to unravel each piece. You get four pieces when you unravel them. So we got all these little tufts of hair sitting there or twine and I'm just going to hot glue it over the horse, over to the back of the horse, just drape it over the neck, add a little bit of hot glue to the back and hot glue it on the back, drape it over the front, add a dab of glue and put that braid down. And we're going to do that along the back of the horse until we get it where we want it. Just going to hot glue it to the back, drape it over the front, add a dab of glue, and hot glue the braid down. When I get it where I want it, I just glued the rest of that braid to the back of the horse. And I'm giving this mane a little bit of a trim. You can make it as long and as fluffy as you want. You can use yarn if you don't want to use jute whatever you want to use but I thought that the jute was so pretty and it looked so just like a, a toy like a toy that was made a long time ago like an antique toy and I love it so we're going to do the same thing with the tail we're going to make a tassel pretty much just measure out how long you want it and I just go back and forth back and forth in my hand and I'm going to I'm going to take that thin jute from Dollar Tree and tie it off, leaving some loops at the top. Going to give it a couple of knots. Again, leaving those little loops at the top intact and cutting apart the long loops at the bottom. And then we're going to unravel all of that and fluff out that tail. And here we have our tassel or our tail. We're going to open up those loops at the top, add some hot glue to the center, and glue it onto the back of the horse. Just going to take my Hello Hobby Black Sharpie and give the horse an eye. Now we're going to take this really pretty um, trim and we're going to give the horse a bit and a bridle. I thought that this ribbon was perfect for this DIY.
Now we've got that all done. I'm going to take that little tiny piece of wooden dowel and I'm just going to add it to the horse's head. And again, this is the handle that a, a child would hold on to if they were actually rocking on the rocking horse. It's the small details, you guys, that I absolutely love. And now we're going to give this horse a little bit more pizzazz. I am going to take my little wood pieces, my little scraps, and my tumbling tower block and my cube. And I'm going to wrap them to make them look like presents. We're going to add those to the platform at, underneath the horse. That's where these are going to go. And this twine that you see sitting here on my table, I picked that up at Walmart. I thought it was perfect for DIYing for the holidays because it has all the colors in it that I need. So I have one of the Dollar Tree Christmas trees. It's a little bigger than I want, so I'm just going to take the base off and I'm going to cut it down and then reattach it to the base. I have another little tiny tree and I'm just seeing if I want to use that one, but I ended up not using it. So I'm just going to get this tree and these presents hot glued into place. And this little guy is done. I forgot to tell you, I took a piece of cardboard and I just cut out a star and I used my Dixie Belle gold gilding wax on the star to give it a little bit of shimmer and added it to the top of the tree. Here he is. Here's the final reveal of DIY number one. Again, you guys, as always, comment down below. Let me know which one is your favorite of the four that I'm going to show you today. This one, hands down, is my favorite. Moving on to DIY number two, I've got some more of that MDF, and this time I cut out a sleigh. Come on, Dollar Tree, I need you to make some sleighs and some rocking horses for me next year so I can stop cutting out my own. <laughs> so I cut out a sleigh, and I have my snowflake buttons from Joann's. I've got a couple of scrap pieces of um, MDF that I cut out into different size boxes. I have my white chalk paint, a jot glue stick. I have the Apple Barrel and Chestnut, Waverly and Silver Lining. I've got my Hello, nope, my Dixie Bell Gold Gilding Wax. I've got this little tree cut out from one of the wood kits from, I think, Dollar Tree. If it wasn't Dollar Tree, it was Target. And then I have this little um, Gingerbread Man, and they come in a pack of maybe eight, and that is from the Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. So I took my white chalk paint and I gave my sleigh a good coat. I think it was two coats of the chalk paint. Then I painted the, the actual blade of the sleigh in the silver lining. And I added my little faux snow from Dollar Tree while the paint was still wet. I went back in pencil in my own handwriting and I wrote dashing through the snow in a couple different fonts. And we're just going back in with the Hello Hobby markers and filling that in, giving it some color. 
I did sand around the sleigh in keeping with my, my style and what I love. I sanded around that sleigh, making it look distressed. This one came out cute too, you guys. I have to say it. They all are just, I love each and every one of them. It was truly hard, like I said, picking a favorite. So I'm going to take my little wood cut out Christmas tree and I'm just going to go in with my Hello Hobby marker and I am going to make my tree green, make the stump brown or the trunk brown, and then I'm going to use my gilding wax to fill in my star. Now I'm taking my jot glue stick and my little pieces of MDF that I cut into squares and we're going to make our presents, just covering them with that scrap paper that I had laying around. going to get those cut out, sand down the edges, add some jute twine to make our bows, and our presents will be done. And I'm just going down some of these little snowflakes. I love these. I got a big pack of these and they weren't that expensive. As you guys can tell, I've been using them here and there throughout my videos this season and I still have a ton of them left. So I'm going to start adding my tree and my presents and my gingerbread, my little gingerbread man to the sleigh. Just getting everything placed where I want it before I hot glue it all down. And this absolutely could have been made like the rocking horse. I could have made another um, blade and used the wood dowel and the beads to put this together to make it more of a 3D look. But I opted to just make this one flat. Getting all of my presents glued down and I'm going to take this craft stick and glue it to the back to help keep those presents in place and on the sleigh. I think we're going to go back with my markers and fill in the presents and the tree in the back just to make it look more finished. All done. Here's the reveal of DIY number two. Moving on to DIY number three, I've got my Hello Hobby chalk paint in the color Sage. I've got one of these little wood round ornament pieces come in a pack of three or four from Hello Hobby. I've got these old stars from 4th of July crafting I pulled out of my stash. I've got 22 clothespins from Dollar Tree. I've got a skewer stick. I have this piece of cardboard that I cut in six by four six and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide. I've got these paper craft poinsettias from Hobby Lobby. And I've got some more of this pom-pom trim from Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I hope you guys aren't tired of Christmas trees because we're going to make another one out of these clothespins. This was really cute and super easy to do. Embellishing it was so much fun because you could just do whatever you want. Once you get the base done, the sky's the limit for anything else. So I painted all of my clothespins in that sage green. I painted them all sides. Do not paint the inside. I painted the inside once you clip it and open it up. I painted the inside. Don't do that. Mine's stuck together. <laughs> do not do that. 
you won't see it anyway once you clip it onto the cardboard. Save yourself the paint and the aggravation. Don't paint the inside of the clothespin. So now I just attached all the clothespins, as you can see, onto that piece of cardboard. And I'm taking my dowel and I'm threading it up through the cardboard with the pointed end headed towards the top. I opted to use, I have a piece of, of that wood tumbling tower block from Dollar General, the bigger, thicker ones. And then I have um, some of the birch twigs from Dollar Tree. I cut, I didn't cut, but I drilled a hole into the top of each one to see which one I liked the best. And I actually liked the tumbling tower block. It was more sturdy, more secure. This is getting ready to be a big mess. I can't get my wood glue out. I'm just, you know, squeezing it, squeezing it, squeezing it. And yeah, look at that. <laughs> way more than I need it. Clean up on aisle three. So I got that cleaned up. <laughs> and now I'm just going to add the wood glue to the hole, some hot glue to the outside of it, and glue it to this little wood round. That was, yeah, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> going to take a baby wipe and get rid of that excess wood glue on the back or actually the front. Now we're going to carefully add a little bit more wood glue to the top of this. Some hot glue to the cardboard around the stem. And we're just going to put that in place. Yes, I see. I have glue on the back of my tree. We'll fix that. Just wipe that off. It'll be fine. To make sure that this is sturdy and it stays in in the um, the little, what is it? Oh my gosh, I drew a blank. The tumbling tower block. I added a piece of wood dowel to the back of the tree where the cardboard meets that tumbling tower block just to make sure it doesn't fall over because it's kind of top heavy from all of the clothespins. We have 22 clothespins, you guys. So I gave it a good sanding, couldn't help it, had to rough it up. And now I'm trying to see, do I really want to use the poinsettias or poinsettias? Um, or do I just want to use some of the greenery? I opted to use some of the greenery because um, it looks too busy. That's too much going on. So I'm not going to use those. I'm just going to use two of the greenery pieces, the leaves with the berries on it. We're going to hot glue those to the bottom. So here you see I'm adding my star. I'm just placing it where I want. And I don't want it to line up the um, silver star, line up evenly on top of the red star. I don't want to do that. I'm going to off center it because I like that look better. It adds a little bit of interest to me. So that's why I did it. And now I'm going to take my pom-pom garland and I'm just going to add three pieces to the tree. I'm going to run a bead of hot glue along that trim. and glue it down, wrap it around and glue the back. Here's the final reveal of DIY number three. I love that the cardboard, you know, is brown. I just left it brown because that to me is the body of the tree, like the, the trunk of the tree. And then the clothespins are the branches or the leaves or pines, you know, you guys know what I mean. But I didn't want to paint the, that cardboard green. I wanted that brown on there. Now, if you want to paint it green, go ahead and do that. But I love this. DIY number four and the final one 
of this video today. MDF is your friend in this video. I free-handed a reindeer. He's kind of fat. He's going to have to go on a diet. Um, I free-handed a reindeer. I'll be using this little wood cutout snowman from one of the Dollar Tree um, craft kits. I've got some craft sticks and all my little embellishments, some berries, a little tree, some scrap fabric, wood dowels, snowflakes, beads, all of the things that I've been using in my video today. And this is a variation of the rocking horse. I have my apple barrel and khaki and chocolate bar. And I have my Hello Hobby markers in green, black, red, and orange. I also will be using the craft marker from Dollar Tree in the color white. And we're just going to start out by getting our snowman all filled in. have some little scrap pieces of leaf greenery so I just cut out two tiny tiny leaves and we're just going to add them to the top of his hat going to add one of those little berries And we're just going to set him aside for later. So here is my little fat reindeer <laughs> that I carved out of MDF. And I'm using the khaki to paint his antlers. And I did two coats of that. And then I just mixed up some brown paint, you guys. I just mix up whatever color until I get a color that I like. And I painted the body of the reindeer. I'm taking one of those little berries and giving him a red nose. I took my pencil and I made a mouth and a little um, eye and it really just looks like a brow because he's smiling and I went over it with my Hello Hobby black marker painted the front and back. I'm going to be using some more of this really pretty like trim ribbon to give him a little bit of a collar kind of looks like little bells to me so that's why I'm going to use it for the collar just hot gluing that on I'm going to set that to the side and I'm going to take this little piece of scrap fabric that I have and give Frosty a scarf that's why I paint it or not paint it but I use the marker to make his scarf red because I knew I was going to add this piece of red fabric and if it um, showed through, like if I didn't cover it completely, it would be red underneath and it wouldn't be so obvious. So I'm just going to tie that around Frosty's neck and I'm going to cut off the extra long pieces I don't need. I'm going to hot glue it in place where I want it. I'm going to go back and fray the ends of that just a little bit. going to set him to the side and here is um, the rocker panels here are the rocker panels for the reindeer I've already got them painted in the khaki color both sides and then I embellished with some beads this one has um, a few extra details that the horse does not have and then I'm adding my wood dowels and I went ahead and stained those with the Dollar Tree furniture marker and it's the color oak and so we're going to get that added to those little rockers. I just wanted to show you a different way to use that ideal that I did with the rocking horse. I'm going to take my beads and just add them to the ends, finishing off the rocker.
And just like with the horse, we're going to take our reindeer and place him. And I'm going to take my pencil. Well, not yet. I'm going to take my craft sticks and see how many I'm going to use for this DIY. going to use five. And now that I've got them all cut down to size, just like with the horse, we're just going to glue those into place. I'm going to go back with my oak furniture marker and give them a stained look. You guys, if you've made it to this far in the video and you have a reindeer emoji, which you may not, you just put in the comments, Rudolph, if you don't have a reindeer emoji. But if you've got a reindeer emoji, give me a deer. And if not, put Rudolph in the comments. That lets me know you hung out with me today. I enjoyed this so very much. I slowed everything down, like I said, so you guys can see what I was doing because usually my videos go super fast, but... I wanted you guys to really be able to see the detail and the work that went into this one. And if you decide to create it yourself, you could do that because it's it doesn't go super fast. But I have enjoyed you guys so much. We're just about done with this video. And it's been so much fun having you here with me. So now I'm just making my notches. I put the reindeer on the dowels. I took a pencil and measured out on the... Um, feet where I want my notches to go so that it fits securely on that dowel, just like with the horse. Same thing, same ideal, same concept. And I just got everything glued down, added my beads to keep it in place. And now we're going to add our snowman. We're going to add Frosty on the back of that reindeer. This one is so stinking cute. We're going to add that little tiny tree that I didn't use on the rocking horse, put a snowflake at the top for my star. And it just looked a little bare sitting there by itself. So I decided, since it's frosty, we're going to add a pile of snowballs by that tree. I'm going to use the white ones and the silver ones and some of the pom-pom trim. I cut some of that off and just made a pile of snowballs and put a little snowflake button there. And this one is done. I love it. I hope you guys do too. And here is the final reveal of all four DIYs that I've made for you guys today. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you're crafting for Christmas. If you are crafting for Christmas, I'd love to know about that. You guys, if you would like to see some awesome crafts, go over to these Cute and Crafty DIY Divas. It is my free Facebook page. Ask to join. An admin will let you in. You can share your crafts over there. You can get inspiration from other crafters. I have some wonderful and amazing crafters over there, you guys. Go check them out. As always, you guys, thank you for being here. Until I see you in my next video, be blessed, stay safe, and craft something beautiful today, you guys. Bye.